8. That's the highest number that you can buy from a BMW at the moment. The first time I saw this car, it was from a bus window in Germany and I instantly fell in love with the shape of it. Ironically, this car was parked outside a Tesla dealership and I trust my is enough to tell you that it wasn't an i8. Now, no one can mistake that PlayStation 5 on wheels for something else, can they? This one doesn't look as outlandish, it looks quite special and BMW will sell you the 8 series in a 2-door or a 4-door coupe format and BMW has quite a few of those body styles in their portfolio. But this one is quite special, it looks quite unique, more so because it also has more meaningful M badges on it. I say meaningful because unlike a plethora of BMW cars with M Sport body kits and a whole new crop of mass-produced M variants like the M40, 50, 60i, the M badge on the 8 Series Coupe points to all-out M engineering. Meaning, unlike the BMW M760i, which plonks a ridiculous 600 PS V12 into a 7 Series limousine, the M8's near-identical power is fine-tuned with racetrack precision, with the complementing hardware that you usually read about only on a full-blown M brochure. So benchmarking against the competition, the M8 also uses a 4.4-litre bi-turbo engine. Uh, it's the same engine that we also get in the new BMW M5. But honestly, I was hoping for a little more engaging soundtrack, something that was a little provoking for the driver. That would have really gone with the essence of this car, with the style of this car. This one, it just doesn't sound as soulful. It comes to life with a nice bellowing growl. But beyond this, it just sort of mellows down a little bit. It doesn't have the kind of crackles and pops that you expect from a German sports car. So it's not that typical German soundtrack, so to speak. Of course, I know that most track junkies are going to choose the M2s and the M4s and doing them up for track use. While the M8, I think it's going to spend most of its time in the front yard parking lots of five-star hotels and resorts. Not that it's not a good track car, it is, but you will have to take it to the track if you really want to exploit its potential, exploit the potential of its powertrain, its handling, its dynamics. While the soundtrack isn't as dramatic, the power comes in quick and the M8 makes rapid progress on open highways and winding roads alike. The all-wheel drive system is comparable to rivals when it comes to outright grip through corners. While it is supposedly more rear biased, I found the front end going into a bit of a typical AWD understeer when provoked. The best way to enjoy the M8 around winding roads or sporty roads is to ensure that the powertrain, all the handling characteristics are set to the Sport or the Sport Plus modes. I have all of that preset under the M1 switch on the steering. There, it changes all of that. You also enter the M dynamic mode by making sure that the traction control and the stability control is turned off. And once you enter that MDM or the M driving mode, you immediately feel this lightness in the steering wheel because that also tells you that all the power and the torque is now going to the rear wheels or most of it is going to the rear wheels and because the chassis nicely tightens up with all the Sport and the Sport Plus modes, things start getting tidy and fun focused just the way they should be in a BMW. That said, you have to be careful about choosing these modes on tighter roads like these because a little bit more power and things can go completely wrong with this car. There's so much grip from the chassis and the tyres that you need a lot of talent and a lot wider road to get the M8 to swing its stubby tail, which is why a track day with this car would make a lot more sense to someone who would like to push this coupe to its edge. But the M8 is not only about edge of the seat entertainment, it's also a good daily driver if you really want to use it like that. There is a noticeable kick in the power band beyond the 4000 RPM mark, there you can probably visually see it. And lower down in the rev range, the engine is quite usable, quite tractable. So even if you want to have a more civilized use, so to say, it's easily possible with the M8. The gearbox is blisteringly quick too and complements the engine rather well. 
and when you start pushing the car harder through its paces, you can hear a melodious transmission whine to go with the powertrain's bassy score. The gearbox can also be fine-tuned for three levels of sharpness using the toggle on the shifter. And in its lowest setting, it feels just as discreet as its counterpart in the 5 Series. With the M8, there's also an adjustable brake pedal feel. And I'm a little bit on the fence on how I feel about them. Now, they can be adjusted for a softer and progressive feel for city use and they can also be tuned for a sharper use for sporty use but then the latter feels a bit too grabby and a bit too sudden a bit too bitey and all the feel and that feedback feels a little artificial on the contrary the steering feels much nicer it is like the older bmws communicative and full of feedback but at the same time it has the likeness of the new generation bmws and that said it feels a lot more communicative and a lot more natural than the i8. The coupe is suspended with springs and adaptive dampers which depending on your mood and settings can tighten the chassis for precise corner entry and exit or waft about on the highway when you are cruising at triple digit speeds. The ride is firm but surprisingly good for a sports coupe, much better than what the M6 managed back in the day. In fact, the only other car of this order that has better road manners and a plusher ride is the S63 Coupe AMG. Of course, that is a four-door coupe, while the M5, well, it's rear seat, the rear seat space, it's tighter than the lines it manages around the corners. Of course, if you want that kind of space, if you want that kind of rear seat real estate, you will have to wait for the M8 Grand Coupe or settle for something like the 8 Series Grand Coupe. But with the M8, that rear seat, there's only space in there for infants in child seats in case you want to start them early and introduce them to the joys of fast cars. But I'm not sure how much will they cherish the memory of an 8 series. Don't get me wrong, this is a nice car, but it just doesn't feel as special to me. Take the 90s E31 for example. The kind of lines it had, the shape, the pop-out lights, it not only looked period correct but it was also fit to be on the bedroom wall as a poster for every child out there who had automotive dreams. The new one just doesn't feel as special, the new one doesn't feel like wallpaper material either. That shape, yeah it's nice, it's got a glamorous shape but the coupe roofline, it feels a little awkwardly raked. The headlamps, they just don't feel special. In fact, all the lighting elements, they just feel like a 5 Series BMW. So that, that special character, that's lacking somewhere. The controversial new M4 looks more exclusive with its large kidneys and the more appealing cabin design and materials. Or the BMW i8, which feels a lot more alluring with its floating panels and scissor doors. From that perspective, the design of the M8 just doesn't strike a chord to convince me to empty an upward of 2 crore rupees into Bavarian pockets. I would rather side with a compatriot from Stuttgart for that kind of money if I necessarily wanted the sports car shape, but I would simply settle for the M5 competition. If you like sports cars, coupes, M cars, there's no way you can avoid or not notice BMW's new glamorous offering. But I don't think the M8 is going to be able to convince you that easily to sign the dotted line if you were to walk into a BMW dealership. It looks great, it's powerful, it drives extremely well as well if you were to take a test drive on the appropriate terrain. So you wouldn't really go wrong choosing the BMW M8 or anything else. It also speaks volumes about your social standing. But then again, there is the BMW M5 competition, the i8, all of that do all of this quite well too. So within its own showroom, within its own stable, there's so much more that offers a lot of competition to the M8. So I think it's not going to have a very easy run ahead of itself.